Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. My name is Genevieve. Hi, Genevieve. I'm Todd. Hi, everybody. Hope everyone has had their coffee this morning. So before we get started with today's topic, I would like to tell you about a project um, that I've been working on, and it's a new podcast. And the name of this podcast is Talking on the Job. It's in English, totally in English. So it's a monolingual English podcast. And there's a storyline in the podcast. So we have two main characters, Rahim and Sabina, and they work in an international company. And they come across some challenges with their English and sometimes business English. And we give them advice on how to overcome these challenges. And I would like just to show you how to access um this podcast so let's take a look so once you're in the web view um of your Babel product and um, so on the home screen you just need to go to the top of the page and click on ubin and then you scroll down to the audio and after you go down to the audio you click and Ta-da! Here are all of our Bubble, Bubble podcasts. And the newest podcast is Talking on the Job. And you can listen on these platforms, Apple and Spotify. Um, but listening to it on our web platform is great because you can read along with the transcript and you can just jump back to the courses and do one of the recommended lessons after listening to the episode. So click on the midschrift show more to see all of the episodes and then select the episode click the play button and enjoy so, so cool Genevieve. so cool um, yeah. and i think yeah for all of you who have never tried a podcast for language learning i think it's a fantastic way to to add to what we learn here in these sessions and maybe to what you do in your other language learning on the app or however else you learn um yeah you can you can relax and sit on your couch and just have a good time listening and learn at the same time so very exactly cool. right and i think one of the best things about this podcast is it's from the learner's perspective from the learner's point of view so we hope that maybe some of you have had a similar experience um to the to these um oh we seem to have lost genevieve yeah also yeah genevieve kommt zurück wahrscheinlich aber bis dahin ähm, fangen wir dann mit unserem thema an ähm, ja wie ihr vielleicht gesehen habt äh, heute wiederholen wir ein thema was wir in der Vergangenheit schon behandelt haben, nämlich Adjektive. Ähm, und heute machen wir ein paar Besonderheiten, die wir noch nicht gemacht haben. Ähm, und ihr seht äh, bald, was das ist. Ja, fangen wir aber erstmal mit, was ein Adjektive ist. Ja, was ist eigentlich ein Adjektiv? Ähm, das sind Wörter, die eine Eigenschaft einer Person oder einer eine Sache beschreiben. Das heißt, sie antworten eine Frage wie, wie ist etwas, ja? Also das antwortet, äh, sie werden auch wie Wörter besch äh, beschrieben. Hi Genevieve, welcome back. Hi, sorry, everything uh, crashed. That's okay, glad you made it back. Um, yeah, we were just discussing the topic auf Deutsch ganz kurz, ja. Yeah. Also Adjektive sind sehr oft wie Wörter benannt äh, in der Grundschule. Um, also sie, sie sind um, Wörter, die ein Nomen beschreiben. Ja? Zum Beispiel ein schöner Tag, ein gutes Buch, a beautiful day, a good book auf Englisch. Ja, um, yeah. wir hatten ja auch besprochen damals, warum es Deutschmuttersprachlerinnen immer so schwer fällt, Adjektive und Adverbien zu unterscheiden. Und um, das ist darum, weil im Deutschen sind die Formen 
sehr oft oder fast immer ganz gleich. Das heißt, Adverbien und Adjektive schauen genau gleich aus. Aber im Englischen ist das nicht so. Das heißt, wir können ganz klar sehen, ob ein Wort ein Adverb oder ein Adjektiv ist. Und ich zeige mal gleich ein paar Beispiele. Wir haben zum Beispiel ein Adjektiv beautiful und ein Adverb beautifully. Also dieses L, Y am Ende ist ganz klar Adverb im Englischen. Aber nicht alle Adverbien haben L, Y am Ende. Das sehen wir bei den Unregelmäßigen. Und zwar zum Beispiel good und well. Also good adjective, a good book und well. He did that well. Also ja, ein Beispiel da. Ja, um, yeah, fun. Da ist ein, yeah. eine Frage für Glimpfenschloss. Fun. Um, that was a fun day. Ja. Yeah. Gibt es einen Adverbien für fun, Genevieve? Ich glaube nicht. He, he, yeah. No, no but I think, I think that's, that's where sometimes the confusion arises with fun and funny. That's true. Um, I think for us, I mean, fun, it's just an adjective. I think so. I think it is. Yeah. It's a good question. I'm glad that we have to really think, yeah. think about that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, that's a little quick review of what adjectives are. Um, so, what it, what are we doing with adjectives today, Genevieve? What is our new, shiny new adjective topic? For today? <laughs> yeah, well, we are going to have some fun with adjectives today. So, Todd gave us a brief review of what an adjective is, but our topic for today is what do we do if we have more than one adjective before the noun do we just stack one on top of each other without thinking or do we have a specific order that we need to follow let's see because it's it's quite common that we have more than one adjective before the noun one example could be the big red house yeah so we have big and we have red in front of the noun house another example could be the two old gray dogs <laughs> so here we have three adjectives that come before the noun and that's That's easy enough. It's almost too easy, actually. So like in English, we also have to pay attention to the order, the Reihenfolge of the adjectives in the phrases. So if we flip the adjectives around, it would sound so unnatural to a native English speaker like myself and Todd. The red big house. No, it, it's completely completely wrong it sounds so so wrong and the old gray two dogs <laughs> what do you think Todd? that sounds a bit crazy it's it's hard to read sometimes when when they're in the wrong in the wrong order um yeah so the order of the of the adjectives is very important um ich spring mal kurz auf, auf deutsch aber Bevor wir das näher anschauen, denk, denken wir ein bisschen jetzt im Deutschen. Ähm, diejenigen, die bei uns letzte Woche waren, wissen wir. Ähm, ja, lass uns erstmal einen Blick auf Deutsch werfen. Und äh, diejenigen, die bei uns letzte Woche dabei waren, wissen wir, wissen, dass wir let's take a closer look at German sagen. Ähm, also wenn wir die folgenden Wörter auf Deutsch anschauen, wie würdet ihr diese Adjektive einordnen. Ich zeige das ganz kurz. So, wir haben noch mal die gleichen Beispiele. Das Haus und dann die zwei Adjektive rot und groß. Also ganz schnell in den Kommentaren schreiben, wie würdet ihr die in, in der richtigen Reihenfolge schreiben. And maybe just 
ganz, ganz kurz. Um, Blümchen Strauss had a question earlier, saying, I'm confused of using fun as a noun and as an adjective. Well, I understand your confusion. It's, it's basically fun is a noun and is an adjective. You can say um, the session was fun or this was a fun session. And you can say we had lots of fun as a mm -hmm. noun. So sometimes we have nouns that are also used as adjectives and vice versa. Yeah. And the, the tricky part about uh, fun as a noun is that in German, you make fun, wir machen Spaß, but in English, we have fun, we so have. we don't we don't make fun. In, in English, you can make fun of somebody, but that's a different thing. That would be, um, yeah, what would you say Flamieren, in German? I think. Spaß, yeah. Flamieren Spaß. or, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cool. Okay, let's jump back to our, our order. So everybody writes Große Rote Haus, yeah? So... If we look at, sorry, I grabbed the wrong thing here. It's Monday. <laughs> um, so if we look at this in the other order of Deutsch, we can see das rote große Haus that feels just as wrong in German as it feels in English. So we, we seem to have something similar between the two languages. Let's look at the second sentence again. Um, Uh, one second. Do you have that one ready? Yeah. Can you paste the second one? So let's look at the the second example with the dogs. We have die Hunde, Grau, Zwei und Alt. Versuchen wir diese Adjektive jetzt einzuordnen. Wie sieht das aus? Habt ihr die gleichen Ideen? Hm. Genau, also Sigrid schreibt hier die zwei alten grauen Hunde. Exactly, genau. Und Michael schreibt genau das Gleiche. Also ihr habt auch das gleiche Sprachgefühl. Und wenn wir jetzt diesen, den Satz in einer anderen Reihenfolge anschauen, die grauen zwei alten Hunde, das klingt auch für meine Ohren aus nicht Muttersprachler auch falsch. Ja. Also das Coole ist hier, es gibt auch konkrete Regeln im Deutschen. Und ich würde auch wetten, ihr habt das niemals in eurem Leben gelernt. Also vielleicht einige von, von euch haben das schon gesehen oder gelesen irgendwo. Mhm. Aber wir lernen das eigentlich als Kind ganz vom Gefühl her. Das heißt, wir haben alle dieses Gefühl von, von der Reihenfolge. Und das finde ich schon mal sehr interessant. Und als verwandte Sprachen haben wir jetzt diese, äh, diesen Vorteil, dass wir unser Sprachgefühl im Deutschen auch im Englischen benutzen können. Das ist schon mal gut. Um, so, ja. Yeah. So, what do we think here, Genevieve? Let's still learn the rules. Why not? Because I think it's interesting and it's useful, even though we have this similarity between the two languages. Absolutely. And I think what you just said is, is correct, Todd, that we learn these types of rules as as children but we don't really learn them we we acquire them we absorb them it's just a natural feeling and i think sometimes this this bauchgefühl this this gut feeling it's quite difficult it's quite difficult to learn but i yeah. think we can we can hopefully help you help you learn that yeah. before we move on again i just would love to clear up this um topic with the fun and the funny yeah. Um, so Blümchen Strauss then asks, so is it a fun party or is it a funny party? It can be both, but different, different meanings. So if you say it was a fun party, that means we had fun, we were talking, dancing, probably drinking, but funny party. Now, this is a question for you, Todd, because if someone said to me, it was a funny party, um I it's not always it's not always positive it exactly. might not be positive so if you say it was a funny party there was something also strange about it yeah. weird 
Um, like Cormish, so, I think, in yeah. this. Like it was a funny party. The people yeah. were, hmm, and the music was a bit, hmm. It was a funny party. Yeah, exactly. Now, when you describe something like a joke or a TV show or something like that, and you say, that's a funny joke or that was a funny TV show, that means that we were laughing a lot during the show. So exactly. funny either means funny, comish, strange, or it means ha ha funny, laughing, it's funny, it's... right? So, and then fun describes, yeah, hat viel Spaß gemacht, yeah? So a fun party, uh, yeah, a fun evening, uh, a fun dinner. Spaß, Spaß, yeah. Spaß. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so exactly. fun, Spaß, and then if it was funny, it's either komisch or lustig. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. I hope I hope that makes sense. I hope it makes sense. Yeah. Okay, but getting back to the order of the adjectives, um, when I was when I was teaching, this was one of my favorite uh, topics to teach because it it can be fun, and when you have many many classes we can expand this a lot but for today we're going to give it to you in a condensed form and when we're asking ourselves questions about the noun most of the time we follow this order so we talk about how many of the nouns so what's the quantity how do you feel about it what's your opinion how big is it? What's the size? How old or young is it? What's the age? How, what does it look like? What kind of shape does it have? What color is it? Where does it come from? So the, or, the origin, the this material. Is often, this yeah. is often like a country or yeah, something like that. Exactly, or, where, was it, where was it made, for example? Yeah. What's the material? So what's it, what's it made of? And the type. Exactly. So, let's let's look really quick at this at these in German as well, just so that you can see them once in German. Es ist auch nützvoll, wenn ihr da ein Stift oder ein Stück Papier habt, die ganz ganz schnell um, hinzuschreiben, weil wir werden mehrmals heute auf sie beziehen. So, quantity, okay. Anzahl, Meinung, Größe, Alter, Form, Farbe. Herkunft, Material und Art. Und denk mal ein bisschen dran, was, was, sind, was ist dran? Das ist ein Spektrum, aber welche, welche Adjektive oder was, was, ähm, ja, was haben die, die Sachen auf der rechten Seite ähm, miteinander zu tun und auf der linken Seite? Wie sind sie anders? Ja? So, genau. you, yeah. And will we maybe just brainstorm a few of these? So if I if I asked you all, could you type in the comments what could be some adjectives to describe the size of an object? What adjectives could we use to describe the size of an object? And while everybody's writing, um... Yeah, adjectives and learning lots of different adjectives is a fantastic way to make your language more lebendig, more colorful. And uh, so I think when you're learning vocabulary, focusing on adjectives and really learning lots of synonyms and different ways to express will, will make your language much more lively, I think. So we have tiny, large, big, small, fantastic. Great, yes. Yeah. We could have enormous, huge, itsy bitsy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, long, short, exactly. Length, height, yeah, we can use all of the different dimensions. Skinny, fat, yeah, exactly. That would maybe cr cross over with shape a little bit too. Cool. Yeah, for sure. That's great. So, that's that's one of the more straightforward ones, one of the easier ones, Genevieve. I'm looking at type though, and I'm like, what is type? What is what is a type? Um, could you do you have an example of one of those that we could give uh, our audience today? For sure, and I think we we talked about this before, and we thought that maybe in German, 
the the type of the noun it's often part of the word and in english we often use an adjective that we put before this noun so let's just say we take the word glass there's lots of different types of glasses so you can have a milk glass you can have a cocktail glass yeah. that would i would say that's the type do you have another example of a glass a type of glass todd um yeah a cocktail glass a beer glass uh is another good one yeah a beer glass even a water glass they tend to be simpler and just yeah so yeah and i think german as a language has so many sort of zusammengestellte substantiven uh that type isn't as important as an adjective for german yeah, yeah. another then, good example oh sorry go ahead genevieve another one that we have is so shelter if you have shelter from the storm shelter maybe a bus shelter when you're waiting for the bus yeah. but you can also have something called an emergency shelter so some place that you need to go in an emergency so that would be the type yeah. of shelter mm -hmm. makes sense yeah and then we have one other example here yeah this is an interesting one because there's also a difference here between british and american english so we have lots of different types of dogs and you can talk about the origin of the, the dog, like the hair comes, where the dog comes from, but you can also talk about the type of dog it is. And one example would be a guide dog. And I wonder, before we give them the American English, does anyone know what a guide dog is in German? Type it in the comments if you know what a guide dog is. I'm not sure I know the German word for it. Oh, I did. I you know. did? Uh... I'm, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Beata has got it there. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. It's a blinden hunt. Yeah. Oh, easy. So, yeah. Very good. Every Lots of people had that one. Ah, light hunt. Is that another, maybe a synonym for it? Cool. Yeah, very good. Yeah, so that's a type of, of dog. Exactly. So, okay. So, yeah. What, what, so Genevieve, tell us a little bit what you think about this continuum. So how can we, so we have all of these different categories, but those are kind of hard to remember. Maybe, yeah. is there a trick for us that we can use? I'd love to say there's a really, really, cute little trick but i think we have like a faust regel like a rule of thumb so we can say that in general if there are some adjectives that are not so fundamental or not so um important for the the essence of the noun then they're usually further away from the noun so for example your opinion about something it, I mean, it's important. Of course, your opinion is important, but it's not so key for the the meaning or the essence of the noun. So something like if something is tasty or fantastic, this is a bit further away in distance from the noun. But if you're talking about the material of something, that's pretty integral. That's pretty important for the meaning of the noun. And that would be closer to the noun. So that's why material comes before type and then we have the noun. Yeah, cool. Yeah, that, that kind of makes sense. And yeah, if we think about an opinion, it's kind of subjective. If we think about size, it's kind of also, it's not, it's not an absolute. We're saying Absolutely. big, small, medium, everybody's, everybody's view on what is big and what is small is different. And so that's a little bit further away from the noun. But the material, yeah, when it's an other material, hat, then it's this an other object. For yeah. So yeah. cool. That's a nice trick. I like that. All so right. will we just remind everyone about, about the order of these? You want to remind them, Todd? And then maybe I can give them a little practice exercise. Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to practice here in a moment, but for those of you who need to want to see these categories one more time, I'm going to put them up once more and read through them, and then we're going to practice. So 
We have quantity or number, so one, two, three, ten, lots, uh, opinion, size, age, shape, color, origin, material, and type. Okay, let's dive in. The best way to do this is to practice, I think. Absolutely, because as we said before, it's the it's the feeling, this natural feeling. And of course, if you're not a native speaker, this is going to be quite difficult. But the best way to get that natural feeling is practice, practice, practice. So the first one, I have two large steel old bikes, red bikes, or tandem bikes. What is missing? Old, red, or tandem? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see a lot of threes. Yeah, that well, looks good. Tandem. All right, you're all on track here. Good. So here we have a number with two, a quantity. We have large, which would be a size. Okay, that's the next one in the order. Steel is a material that puts us way over on the other end of the spectrum. So now there's only one kind of adjective that can fit closer to the noun, and that is tandem, which is a type. Yeah, fantastic. Really well done. Great. Let's look at another example. Here we go. So we have that hmm, round dining table is on sale. We have brown round dining table, folding round dining table, or oak round dining table, or big round dining table. <laughs> hmm. So we have a color folding what would that be that would maybe be that might be a type right mm -hmm. i think we have oak which would be a material and then we have big which was would be a size what do we think a lot of people are choosing four interesting Oh, some people have two answers. <gasps> One and four. Four. What do you think, Genevieve? I see, I see a lot. I see a lot of answers. <laughs> wow, Krista has given four as well. Okay, well, I would definitely go with big. What about you, Todd? Yeah. So if we look at the adjectives in the sentence itself, we have round, which is a shape, I would say. Yeah. And then dining is a type. So we have we have a shape and a type. So the ones that we could put before round would be an age, so old or yeah. new, a size, big or small or medium, an opinion, ugly, pretty, fantastic or quantity. So I think probably size is going to be our best answer here. Yeah. Yeah. And if we if we wanted to choose brown, it would probably go right after round. So that yeah. round, round dining table. For me, shape and color are kind of a little bit ambiguous. Absolutely. I was just going to say yeah. that. That yeah. brown, round. I mean, those two are almost like a tongue twister, brown and round. Um, ah, Krista. She's talking about the possible order. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, maybe we didn't explain that well at the beginning, but we're just looking at the at the missing adjective here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that so makes... those of you who wrote multiple numbers, who, who were ordering the, the choices, which is also an okay way to do it, it would be big brown oak folding. So four, one, Three, two, exactly. Cool. Nice. Okay, so now we have a little bit of practice under our belts. 
Um, what, what do we say under our belt in English? That would be like in der Tasche, I think in German. Yeah. Uh, we have some practice under our belt. So let's try a bit of brainstorming. Um, let's say, yeah, I think you have, you brought an object with, with you today, right? Yes. Cool. Well, let's start, let's start with your object. So this and, is, it's very yeah, so, special. This is something that my, my mother made for my daughter, for our daughter. And just this Christmas, just gone, um, she made her, oh, wrong direction, this jumper. So just this Christmas, she made this all by herself. <laughs> I hope you can, I hope you can all see it. It's very difficult to know the, the direction of this. That's great. So what should we do here? Let's. So first thing to do is brainstorm as many adjectives as you can for the sweater. Um, maybe what we can do is tell tell the audience what it's made out of so that they can use the material. Yes. So the the material is wool. The okay. material is wool. So it's made out of wool. We can talk about color. We can talk about an opinion. So sit at home and sort of write down all of the letters that are all of the adjectives that you can think of to describe the sweater and then try to put them in an order. And as soon as you're ready, please post your adjective plus noun combination in the comments. Let's see how many different adjectives we can come up with. Yeah, just, just type lots and lots of adjectives. Yeah, you can just type in adjectives too if you want. Yeah. Or you can come up with a whole string of yeah. adjectives in in the correct order. I hope I hope my mom is watching. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think she would just be so embarrassed, like, "Oh no, you showed it." I think it's great. It's pretty fantastic. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> oh, I see Gunther. Do you maybe want to post Gunther's sure suggestion? Okay, so here we have we have some great adjectives here. Woolen, which is a great adjective. That's one of these one of these old adjectives in English that still have an en on the end. It almost mm -hmm. looks German uh, that word. So woolen, warm, red, Christmas jumper. We have from Blumchenstrauss. We have lots more here. Soft, lovely, nice. Good looking, gorgeous, fantastic. <laughs> we have, oh. okay, we have from Basla Andi a red woolen handmade Christmas sweater. Also fantastic. So yeah. let's, did you? We have from Sigrid, another fantastic one here. A wonderful yeah. red and white. Ah, this is a good one. So she, Sigrid writes red slash white. How do we do that in English if we have more than one color? We can use uh, a hyphen or a, yeah. a dash. So instead of red slash white, we can write red and white like this. Also super useful. One second. Exactly. So yeah. here, this is how we do two colors in English as an adjective is to use a hyphen. Also really useful. Cool. And can I just show, um, let me see, Uli. I like this one as well. One nice, small, red, woolen, handmade Christmas sweater well that's really good and i think those are all in exactly the right order so we have yeah. a quantity an opinion a size a color a material uh what would you say handmade is a type so we actually have two types handmade <laughs> christmas yeah handmade christmas sweater fantastic that's brilliant and i wanted to yeah. show one more just, it just popped up from beata one sweet small new long sleeve red irish woolly <laughs> wow. ah, that's really good 
And here as well, we have an interesting, another two word uh, adjective with long sleeve. And there, just like with the two colors, we would also use a hyphen there. So we have lots of hyphens in English in these, with these compound adjectives. So long sleeve, in this case with a hyphen. That's really good. Fantastic, everybody. Love it. Brilliant. We have another one. We have another object. I brought something too. Um, I'm going to hold it up. It's not as exciting as yours, but this is this is also a special mug that uh, that we have from our first trip to Poland. So this is a piece of Polish pottery. It's made out of ceramic, just so that you have that word. Um, it's got a nice pattern on it. It's actually quite large. If I hold it up next to my other coffee cup. It's a lot bigger, so you, you can use that in your description. Um, and maybe hold it a little bit closer just so we can see that pattern really yeah. close. Yeah, uh, yeah. We, have, we have kind of some little fruits on there. And also I have to show the bottom because just like your sweater, it's also handmade in uh, Poland. Uh, so brainstorm a little bit, think about what we could how we could describe this. Think about your opinion about it as well. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Is it ugly? <laughs> I won't be offended. I won't be offended. I mean, also with Christmas sweaters or Christmas jumpers, it's a, it's a very typical adjective to use, ugly. You can say ugly Christmas jumper, ugly Christmas sure. sweater, but I don't think so. Your, your, your mug is very nice. That's quite nice, yeah. Oh, I see Albert is already making use of the hyphenated uh -huh. colors. Uh -huh. One big white blue cup. Uh -huh. Yeah, you can also put an and in there. So white and blue or blue and white. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah, interesting. From Bastel Andy. A white, blue, old fashioned ceramic coffee cup. Very nice. I like that. And there again, we have a compound, a two word adjective with old fashioned. And here again, don't be afraid to use that hyphen. Yeah. So here again, with old fashioned, we would usually also put in a hyphen like that. Yeah. Very good. And would you say, I mean, a lot of people are writing white blue now. I'm wondering, I guess it is better to say white and blue for the colors because yeah. they are separate to each other. Yeah. yeah. And what's it, what I'm thinking about too is like, I think I would usually say blue first and I don't know why. Me too. I would, I would too. usually say blue and white. Blue and or, white, yeah. And I think you could say white and blue if white was the main color or, you know, if you wanted to so, sort of say it, it's white first, then it has a little bit of blue. But I think for me, neutral, the most neutral way to say the colors of this would be blue and white with a hyphen. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, yeah. Ooh, I like this one. There's even a little prepositional phrase at the end. A handmade ceramic cute white mug with blue fruits. So here we just would move some of those adjectives around a little bit. Handmade yeah. ceramic would be a little bit closer to mug. White and cute are more like opinion color. Those go a little bit further away, but those are all really good adjectives as well. Yeah. Really nice. Ooh, okay, I have to post one more here from Beata, a really good <laughs> adjective. One interesting, big, used, yeah, used is another good one, bulbous, white, oh. blue, American porcelain cup. Bulbous is a fantastic word. Wow. How would you Where describe you bulbous, Genevieve? Wow. <laughs> Look at my face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it sticks out in the middle. Yeah, it's... Yeah, like round, but with more like a bubble. Yeah, like a shape. bubble, kind of. Really nice, really nice. Cool. I love it. So 
as you can see, adjectives are incredibly useful. Just if we just said a coffee cup, that's not very descriptive. It's boring. It's it's if we think about stories that we read in books and novels and so on, adjectives are like the the life of the language. So they're super important to learn. And the order, of course, as we see, it's pretty rare that we have just one adjective to describe something. So getting these orders into our heads and think about German again. Think about how you would say it in German, and that will help you. So exactly. cool. Exactly. Will we will we move straight on to the quiz then, Tash? I think so. Let's do the quiz. Let's do the quiz. Yeah. Hope everyone everyone is ready. Um. So maybe Todd, would you mind just one last reminder, posting the order, and then I will yep. kick off with the first question. Yep. I'm gonna post the order one more time. Okay. Here we go. First question. This is just a free a free gap for you to fill, okay? So we're going to give you this sentence and I just want you to to tell us what adjectives or what adjective per one per person could go in this gap. So there are three mm, blue birds sitting on the roof. Mm -hmm. There are three what blue birds sitting on the roof. So we already have the quantity is three and we already have the color, which is blue. So what could go in between the quantity and the color? Mm -hmm. What adjective could you put in there? Small, yeah, mm -hmm. that could be the size. Great, size fits well, three small blue birds. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see young, yeah. old, yes, small, yes. <laughs> singing bluebirds, singing bluebirds. What's interesting is bluebird, a bluebird is also a type, a bluebird. It's a thing. Oh, it is, of course it is. So if it's a yeah. type, then singing works. If of it's, course it is. If it's a color, then it doesn't, but yeah. Pretty, ah, oh, yep, and an opinion also fits in there nicely from Very Doris. Nice. We have a pretty bluebird as well. Beautiful, yep, beautiful. Hungry, yep, really good. All right, Thanks. lots of options in there, all really good answers. I didn't, I don't think I saw any incorrect answers there. That's fantastic. No. Cool, let's do the next one. So this is a different type of question. We're gonna keep you on your toes today. So here we have to guess which adjective is missing. So this is a little bit like our questions before, earlier in the session. This one is pretty tricky. Read very closely the sentence. Genevieve, very closely. <laughs> yeah, Genevieve got very tricky here. There's, there's one correct answer, I will tell you that. There's only one correct answer here. But there's a second one that looks right as well. <laughs> I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. I just want to check that everybody's awake. Uh -huh. okay, we see some one and a two. Let's let's wait a few more seconds. Well, ones and twos. A few more twos, a three. Okay, there's a little bit of difference of opinion here. I think you're gonna have to talk us through this one, Genevieve. Okay. So, he drives A, and if you look, what's the next adjective before the car? It's green. So we've already got the color. Mm -hmm. um, and so before that, we can have the shape, the age, the size, the opinion, or the quantity. But we can't have the origin. Yeah, so the origin would be German, and that's incorrect. So number one is incorrect. Okay. Now, what about the age of it? We, we could have the age. So old should fit, but old does not fit because <laughs> old begins with a vowel. And if you see, he drives 
A, old, doesn't work. He so tricky. Man, old. I know. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Das ist, so das ist gemein. Yeah, das ist sehr gemein. So old would be correct if it was he drives an old car. Okay. So the only answer left is number two. He drives a small green secondhand car. So the size, the color, and the type of car. Okay. Yeah. The secret, secret's right there. Yeah. Very Turkish. Yeah. Tricky. Okay. okay. Here's another one. We have a couple more. Yeah. So in this one, we have three blanks and we have three options for the order. So we have, he is such a cute little dog. He is such a dog, little cute. He is such a little cute dog. Hmm. So which order, which one of these orders reads best? And here, I think for me, it really helps to read them aloud or at least to sort of say them aloud to myself. So maybe if you're at home, try reading them aloud to yourself and you yeah. might sort of start to get that Sprachgefühl in English as well. Because yeah. you probably have it in German. If you read things in German, I think you would recognize, ah, that one doesn't feel right. So read them aloud at home and you'll start to get that feeling in English as well. Yeah. Ah, oh, here we have lots of ones. Very good. Yep. Excellent. Looks great. Yep. The ones are correct. Very good job. So cute little dog in this case sounds, I think, for, for both of us, clearly uh, the most natural. Let's look at another one. We've, wow, it's late. We've got time for two more. Let's do this one and then one more. Yeah, and I've got the next one all ready to go after this one. Okay. So, so they have... Oh, are you going to read? Go I'll ahead. read this one. So they have two large ancient treasured chests in their basement. They have two large ancient treasure chests. Did I read both those? I think you read the same, yeah. Okay. Two ancient large, yeah. And then two ancient, ancient two large treasure chests in their basement. <laughs> You're showing us, Genevieve, why it's good to read them aloud, because if you struggle to read it aloud, if it's hard to read aloud, then it's probably not the best order. Okay. What do you think? All right. We have ones and twos. Mm -hmm. So the main difference between one and two is the age the age and the size. So okay. does the age come first or does the size come first? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the twos have it. Oh, the twos have it. So, mm -hmm. so the correct reading would be they have two large ancient treasure chests. Perfect, perfect. Very good. Okay, and the last one, anyone who has traveled to Bali, Will appreciate. Do you want to read this one, Ted? Sure. We have Is that a delicious yellow Balinese jackfruit? A is that a yellow delicious Balinese jackfruit? Or is that a Balinese delicious yellow jackfruit? Have you ever tried jackfruit? I think I have. It's jackfruit is one that is almost like a they almost use it to to be like meat in a dish, yeah. right? It's very yeah. dense. Yeah, I have had yeah. it. Yeah. And it doesn't smell very nice, but it tastes delicious. Yeah. Okay, we have lots and lots and lots of ones, a couple of twos, a couple of threes. So yeah, delicious is still an opinion. Everyone yeah. has a different a different taste. So yes, all the ones have it. Delicious, yellow. Balinese, because you have the color, and then we have the origin of the jackfruit. Very good. Yeah, so here we had one with the country, with a, with a place, just like the, the Polish mug. Uh, and that, those always go pretty close to the noun, because it, it's very, it defines it. It's, I always say in German, in, in German it, you'd say, I think it's wesentlich. It has its very core to the noun. So Absolutely. Very cool. Really good. Thank you, everybody, for coming today and learning with us today. 
uh, I had a lot of fun. I had lots of fun too. And don't forget to fill out the feedback form. We would love to hear what you think of the session and if you have any um, tips for us or any suggestions, um, please let us know. Yeah, fantastic. And we, as usual, we will be with you again next week. I believe next week it will be Genevieve and Karina. I think so, yeah. With a new topic as usual. And uh, yeah, have a wonderful week, everybody. Thank you for coming. And yeah, till next time. Till next time. Bye. Bye-bye.